about what can Akbar tell us about India today? Well, um, <laughs> when Akbar became Emperor of India, um, as you will see and as a lot of people know, he was only 13 and he was the third of his dynasty to um, rule India. It wasn't the India that we know of today, um, geographically, politically or culturally, you know, in any form, except of course for, yes, the caste system still existed. Uh, the various religions and creeds of India that, that we identify with the Indian subcontinent were of course in place, but there was a great a vacuum, a flux of um, who, would, who was ruling India and, and, and whose vision was really stamped upon you know, the lives, the everyday lives of people. So when he began, um, as I said, it wasn't the India that we know of today. There were rulers you know, the law. I mean, there was the, there was the Rajputs in, in, in Rajasthan, there were the Afghans who he just replaced, there were the Uzbeks in the Northwest, there was, there was a, a, a real fight to, to control that seat of power. Um, and then we see that uh, he gradually began to, to, to rely on a very good team of people. He would find them from far-flung corners of India, bring them together, uh, it, was a, it was a policy that evolved over time, and in that um, we see the makings of modern India, and modern India. Um, for example, his policy, his religious policy, which has often been talked about. Now, it didn't just begin with Akbar being born and becoming king, and, and he was born with this idea that we have to have a secular India. No. Um, in fact, he started off with a very militant and a very violent policy towards uh, some of his subjects, particularly in Mewar in Rajasthan. Um, but then that was, uh, parallel to that, there, was, there were matrimonial alliances, which were, although they happened, were not common for the emperor, a Mughal emperor, to, with to other have, with, other, with other religions, with mm -hmm. other rulers, there were matrimonial alliances. Uh, those kingdoms and their nobles, their rulers, were incorporated into the imperial hierarchy. So we see a system of, of devolution happening from the person of the emperor himself to a council, almost a council of ministers, and then their dependents who, who would then you know, work with them. Again, from um, mixed creeds. And again, from yeah. a, a very eclectic body yeah. of, of, of uh, creeds and castes mm -hmm. and, and religions. Uh, so, in that sense, you see, we, we now see that in India today. I mean, it's the first time that was attempted on such a grand scale and, and that a, a secular polity was actually given an official imperial sanction um, in Akbar's policies. Um, apart from that, of course, revenue models, for example, uh, how peasants and farmers and, and you know, agriculturists were taxed the division of land, uh, land records, um, all this was all created at the time of Akbar. Um, transport, um, some of the some of the greatest sort of you know um, by roads of India. So it wasn't the British. It wasn't all the British. No, I mean the British then worked on that yeah. and, and developed it further. Mm -hmm. um, but but they had this blueprint for them, um, which which uh, you know was laid down actually implemented by Akbar. Um, there were other kings before him, Sheikh Shah Sur of the Afghans, for example, who created this uh, map for uh, uh, transport and, and movements and highways all the way from Calcutta to the Afghan border, present-day Afghan border. And, but it was a road that he you know, envisaged, which was built by Akbar, and which we know now is the Grand Trunk Road. Um, so, you know, that, that is one aspect. Uh, in terms, um, in terms of the court, as I said, he drew from such a wide and eclectic body of people uh, that the entire fabric of the court, of, of the imperial court, changed. And with that, of course, the dialogue changed. The issues that people spoke about, talked about, changed. The, uh, the whole, the whole um, nature of, of politics and government under Akbar began to move towards a, a very sophisticated and a very modern form of politics. I mean, this is a time when we're talking about Europe saw the Spanish, uh, you know, Spain was having the Inquisition 
Britain was ha was facing the schism between um, Catholics and, and Protestants, and the break with Rome occurred. Uh, of course, Western Europe, there were all kinds of tensions and, and pulls and pressures in the name of religion, in the name of um, uh, you know private uh, kingdoms and people trying to break away from larger. So, converse, conversely, and and totally opposite to that, we see in India a not a fragmentation, but a coming together of, of, of society and politics under Akbar. Mm -hmm. And I think that is where the foundations of modern day India uh, were laid. As I said, it didn't happen suddenly. Um, it happened over time, but it was something that evolved as a result of Akbar. And the literal, literal foundation? What did he build that we didn't know about? I mean, literally, of course, in terms of architecture, mm -hmm. Uh, you have the model for one of the greatest buildings in the world, the Taj Mahal. Mm -hmm. You have the model for that in the in the tomb of Humayun, his father, which began and was finished in, in Akbar's reign. Um, you have Agra Fort, of course, which was made into a citadel of you know um, vast proportions. And of course, no, not to forget Fatehpur Sikri, which was an imperial city, a whole capital that that was constructed uh, on a greenfield site by Akbar and. Even today, I mean, even though it is it is abandoned and, and there it isn't lived in, you get a sense of, of, of power and glory and grandeur of uh, Mughal kingship there, um, even to this day. Um, how flawed a character was that for? Well, I mean, he was a human, uh, after all, mm -hmm. and, and like all individuals, he had... Uh, Laws, I imagine, of course he did. Um, 